Now you're going to use a practical approach of creating this mahogany box lid. You'll reinforce the general process of creating parts and you'll learn how to use the selection manager. Start by creating a new part file. Now make a sketch on the top plane. Once you've done that, use the center point rectangle command to draw a rectangle on the origin of the sketch. Set the height to 5 inches and the width to 8 inches. We've used the corner rectangle command in the past and which command you use is a matter of preference. I prefer to use this command on the first sketch because it centers the feature on the origin of the part. You'll see how this works in just a minute. Confirm that the sketch is fully defined and then close it. Now extrude the profile one inch. As I said earlier in the course, the first step is to construct enough material to create the part and then cut away to create the details. There are exceptions to this rule, but in most cases this is the best way to start. Now we're going to cut along the top edge of the part to create a concave corner. Create a sketch on the long side of the part. Now I want you to notice the origin of the sketch is centered on the part. It's located here because we use the center point rectangle command to create the profile used in the extrude operation. When you create a new sketch, the origin is automatically aligned with the origin of the part and offset from the origin based on the location of the plane you selected to create the sketch. Since extrude 1 is centered on the origin of the part, the origin of this sketch is located here. It's offset from the origin of the part along the z-axis. The reason I'm pointing this out is you need to understand how the location of sketch geometry is constrained. You basically have two options. You can constrain new geometry to the origin of the sketch or you can constrain it to existing geometry. Let's draw the circle and I'll show you how this works. Click the circle command and then select the node on the corner of the part. This circle is constrained to the corner of extrude 1 using the coincident relation. If we change the size of extrude 1, the corner will move and this in turn will move the location of the circle. So the size of the extrusion controls the location of the circle. This is ideal because we want to be able to change the size of the extrusion and have the location of the circle automatically update. Now consider constraining the circle to the origin of the sketch. We could use construction lines drawn from the origin and add dimensions that would place the center of the circle in the same spot. The only problem with this is when we change the size of the extrusion. In this case, the location of the circle won't change. You may not want the location of the circle to change in some cases, but most of the time you should use existing geometry to constrain the location of sketch geometry. Set the diameter of the circle to one inch. And then confirm that the sketch is fully defined. Now close the sketch. We're going to use the edges of the extrusion for the path of a sweep operation. It will be a cut operation and if you notice all these commands are cut commands. They're identical to the base boss commands but they cut material away. So from this point on I won't make the distinction between the commands. I'll simply say something like cut a sweep of the profile along the top of the part. And this implies that you need to use the cut version of the sweep command. Open the sweep command and as you can see the options are identical. The profile was automatically selected. Click the path window. And now we need to select all the edges on the top of the extrusion. Whenever you need to select multiple edges, right click and then open the selection manager. The selection manager has anticipated that we need to select several edges, so the select group icon is active. Select the edges. And then type the inner key. Now you can see a preview of the operation. Type the enter key to apply the sweep. We've started the process of cutting away from the model and in the next lesson we'll use the shell command to finish it. 
Before you proceed to the next lesson, save the file under the name Box Lid.